Hello, and welcome to Computer Cut Pro. In this tutorial, we're going to show you some of the custom adjustments you can make in the program that you might want to apply to your program. We are going to start by taking a look at your plotter. To get to your plotter, go to File, Cut Window, and up at the top, go to Cut and Plotting Defaults. And this is where all the settings are for your plotter. In this case, we have the Jaguar plotter, which we sell. And this is the selected plotter. And then go to Setup, and it shows the settings within the plotter, the port that it goes to, and other information on the plotter. So we're going to start with the tool options. Under the tool options, you actually have the ability to control the speed and force and other settings on your plotter. If you are cutting many different materials with different forces and speeds, you might want to use this because before you cut, you can automatically send the information to the plotter. And up here, you can store different settings for different material. Or you can just do it from your plotter as you probably have been doing. To set these, all you have to do is make sure that they are highlighted with the check mark. Next, we're going to do one of the more common functions that many people ask, and that is to feed the material out after it's cut. So to do that, click on the setup, and then down here, additional X move at end. Your X coordinates are the, from left to right on the bottom here, and your Y coordinates are from the bottom to the top, up and down. So in this case, the Jaguar plotter has a little groove on the front of the plotter where you can cut the film off. So you can set this to 4.75 or to 5 inches and click Apply. And after the plotter cuts the material, it will feed it out to that little groove in the front of the plotter, which is 4.75 inches. Next is the Get Page Size. Once you've set up your plotter, you can click on the Get Page Size and the program will pull your plotter to find out what is the maximum width of material that you can cut in. So if you have a bunch of patterns in here and you're worried about whether it's going to fit within the area in which you can cut, you can click on the Get Page Size and it will pull your plotter and it will tell you what the maximum width is that you can cut. In this case, we pulled the plotter and the maximum width of the material that's in there, because we have a 40 inch roll, is 37.5. So if we hit Control A on your keyboard, if you've got patterns in here, you hit Control A, which is basically select all. And up at the top here, it'll show the width and the height of the material that you're cutting. If it's less than 37.5, it will be able to fit. If it's more, it will not. If you do pull the plotter, though, it's very important that you reset this back to 72 inches, because if you don't, program is always going to think that you have 37.5 inches of material in there. And if you put a larger roll in there, then it's going to cut a smaller size. So it might not fit. So make sure that you reset it back to 72 inches once you do that. Next, we're going to go back to the cut window where we've pulled in a couple of patterns here. And it's very common for people to, once they pull in a, a pattern, they should be able to just hit cut. But we often see people click on an image and they drag the image up off the bottom, thinking that it might cut the bottom of the image off. You shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to just pull it right into the cut window and hit cut. But if it is cutting off the bottom of an image, then you can adjust it in the plotting defaults. Again, you just go to cut, plotting defaults, and right here, Y move and X move. Y is from the bottom to the top, X is from the left to the right. So let's say 
it cut off a quarter inch of the bottom of the window here. So to correct it, all you do is just put in 0.25 and click apply. And what will happen is when it goes to cut, it's going to move this pattern up a quarter of an inch so it doesn't cut the bottom. And the same applies to the X move. If you find that it's cutting off a part of the pattern right here, again, you just put in whatever amount you need it to go from right to left, and it will move it before it cuts. So there are a few of the customizations you might want to apply to the plotter in your program. Next, we're going to show you how to customize your toolbars. Over here, the toolbars are the icons that we had in the old computer cut program. These are the exact icons that were used in the old computer cut program. But we also have an enhanced toolbar with icons that are more oriented towards our industry. To select them, go to View, and then Toolbars. And then, as you can see, we have the Computer Cut 1 and Computer Cut 2 toolbars selected. Those are the, these two over here. So we'll go to Computer Cut 1 and Computer Cut 2, and then down to Icon Size and select Large. And as you can see, it changes the sizes of the icons and the toolbars. And they are more oriented toward the window tinting and paint protection industry. If you have a large screen laptop or a desktop computer with a large screen, you shouldn't have any problem with these fitting within your screen. If you have a smaller one, then it might cut off the bottoms down here. So you would probably be better off using the older icon and toolbars. So again, to go to them, you just go to View, Toolbars, Icon Size, and then to Medium, and it will switch it back to the old ones. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to use the large icon. So again, we'll go to Toolbars, and then size, and then large. A couple more toolbars that you might want to have on your in your cut window is your graphics toolbar. If you go to view and go to toolbars and then to graphics, click on that. Then you have all of your graphics functions if you're going to do any type of graphic work. You can leave this on or you can turn it off. In this case, we're not going to be using it, so we'll go back and we'll go back to toolbars and we'll turn that one off. And one final toolbar or palette, it's a color palette, you might want to have on is your manufacturer palette. There's a bunch of different palettes in here, but this is the most common one. And it pops up and it pulls it up over here. You can move this wherever you want. On, oops, didn't want to move it there. Let's move it over here because kind of like it over there and what this does is it changes the colors of whatever you have selected so in other words i've got front window here and i can click on green and it'll turn it green as you can see it still has a red border around it so to eliminate the red border you just click on the right click on that and it eliminates the red border but we're going to go back to the to the red so we'll click red and then again, to change the border to red, you just right click on it and it changes it to red. Again, this is a toolbar that you can either leave on here or you can remove it. Next, we're going to cover the grid. We'll go ahead and close this out and then uh, reopen it. And the Cut window defaults to a, a blank screen here, but many people like to have a lines of grids. So to turn that on, you just go to View and then Show Grid. And here it shows the grids. These are in five inch increments. If you would like it to show up in different size in increments, you can customize it to whatever size you want. 
To do that, simply go up to Options, Computer Cut Setup, General Preferences, and right here, you can adjust the grid, grid size for whatever you want. So as we mentioned, the this is set up for a five inch, but you can make it 10 inch or whatever size you want. So you can customize it to whatever you choose. Next, we're going to show you how you can customize your guidelines. The guidelines are these right here, and they default to 18 inch, 22, 34, 30, 38. What these are is it's about the maximum size that you can cut for different size materials. So in other words, for 20, 20 inch rolls, about the maximum is 18 inches. Now that apply, allows one inch on each side where the pinch rollers fit. And if you're good at putting the pinch rollers at the maximum width, you might want to adjust these. So the way in which you do that, you go to Options, Guides, Edit Guides, and in there it shows all of your guides in here. So let's say, you know, you use mostly 20 inch rolls, but uh, you have the pinch rollers pretty well set towards the outside of it. So you might want to uh, change this. So you go in and you change it to 19 inches and click change. And let's say you uh, change your 20, you have 24 inch to uh, let's say a 23 inch. So you click on that, change this to 23 and change and let's say you don't use 36 inch rolls that much so you could go in and you can delete it again if you're good at setting your pinch rollers for a 40 inch roll you can change it to 38 to a uh, 39 that would be for a 40 inch roll and we'll get rid of the 001 we don't need that one here so that's how you would change the guidelines. And as you can see, they're changing. One other point is these fonts for these sizes are kind of a little bit light. So you might want to change your font. So you can go over here and go to label font and we'll scroll up and we're going to change these to an Arial. And we'll make it Arial Black. And then also this is set at 48, might want to make it a little bit larger. So I'll click on 72 and then click OK and then click OK. And as you can see, it changes the size of the font. So again, you can adjust them to whichever size you want. Final customization you might want to try is a customized blank size. The blank is this black bordered area right here where you do all of your work. All of the work is done inside this blank size. So for instance, it defaults to a width of 40 inches, which is this right here, and then a length of a thousand inches long. So this is the area in which you will do all of your work, depending upon the roll size that you pick. But there are times when you might want to have a larger size. So for window tinting, all of the windows are prearranged for a 40 inch roll. So all you have to do is just go and select the windows that you want to cut and hit cut. And it will pull them in exactly the way they appear in the main application window. But if you pull up windows that are larger than the blank size. So for instance, this is 40 inch, but if you click down here and select this sun strip, the program thinks that the size is the 40 inch here and this down here. So it is going to automatically optimize or nest the pattern. So if you click cut, as you can see, it automatically optimizes them for the 40 inch so if you don't want it to optimize like this, you need to increase the size of the blank. So we can go to a 72 inch size. And it'll optimize it for a 72 or you can close this out. And then if we bring these 
windows back in, it will not optimize them. It sets them up exactly how they are in the, in the uh, main application window. So if you don't want the blank to automatically optimize the windows for whatever you're cutting, it's best to go ahead and select a 72 inch width, or you can actually customize one of the sizes right here. To do that, you go to layout, blank size, and change the custom size to whichever size you want. If you put 200 inches in here, that should fit almost anything that you want to fit into the blank size. So you click 72 and put 200 inches in there and then click OK. And you now have a custom size of 200 inches. So this is very beneficial if you're doing paint protection patterns. For instance, with this paint protection pattern, let's say we're going to use a 24 inch hood and we want to cut a 30 inch bumper along with it. And then let's say the headlights and you click cut. And it pulls it in exactly how it appears in the main application window. Here you can then arrange the patterns the way you want them. We'll uh, delete the 30 inch here. And then we can tell these, this bumper is grouped because these cutouts are light in, in color. If, if they showed up as black, they are not grouped, so you would have to individually select them and group them. But since they are already grouped, now we can go and we can just change the size of the blank. Let's say we want to fit it. We have a 60-inch uh, roll of paint protection. So we'll click 60, and it'll automatically optimize it for a 60-inch roll. You can even optimize it even further if you hit Control A on your computer, which is select all, and then go down to here, nest. And if we look at the amount of material that we're going to use here, it's 107 inches long. So if we go down to nest and we can see if it can even nest it even further. So we'll click apply and it'll change it again. And again, we're around 107. So don't save much. But if you don't want it to automatically nest, create a custom blank size, and then you can select and pull in patterns without them optimizing or nesting on it. So there are a few of the customization features you might want to try. If you have any questions, you can call our technical support line 800-348-3193.